the Democrats are saying this was a political stunt. He had been in Las Vegas, went to Indianapolis uh, to make this statement. Well, Peyton Manning was being honored before the game. He was there for the pregame. Let me tell you something. I've known the vice president and Mrs. Pence for a decade, probably 20 years. I've worked with them for a decade, including when he was governor. It takes a lot to get that man's blood boiling. And to refer to somebody who's standing up for the flag and all it represents to hundreds of millions of Americans and all it signals to the world, mm -hmm. our veterans, our unity, the founding of our great nation, to call that a political stunt is truly outrageous, egregious, and offensive. It was on the books um, already, when right? This, it was on the books. But let me just say this. When Governor Pen when Mike Pence was the governor of Indiana, there were many times that he had to receive a go and, and comfort and console the family of a fallen soldier. He was helping to receive uh, the remains of our brave men and women. And those coffins are always draped in a flag. And this is a man who said he doesn't think it's too much to stand. I, I, I want to give a, a little lighthearted note here. Brent Musburger, of course, mm -hmm. a legendary sportscaster, said uh, on Twitter last night that somehow since these 49ers have started this, they've won two games. So maybe they should take a knee in the <laughs> other team's end zone. Right. Um, and did you see in the prompter, Steve, it says the Giants are 0-5? Right. Yeah. That hurts I just my said Philadelphia feelings. Eagles. Why that. would you? Why would you say that? And because you know, I went to the game yesterday. Because uh, I'm an Eagles fan. And you know, Gavin Haddon, who's uh, the interim uh, executive producer, uh, he oh is God. a Giant fan. Yeah, he is a Giant look, fan. You know, we have to stop. But I want to say something seriously. We keep on focusing on the very few, the handful of folks who take the knee, who raise their fists. Let's talk about, especially to our children watching. Let's talk about to the next generations what the flag means. We're Pittsburgh talking about why the protesters the House, are there. Right? They're coming to. Tomorrow, uh, to be heralded to as the, the NHL. Mean? Oh, the flag! I still think is the most cohesive, unifying symbol in our nation, Ainsley. At a time when we feel very fractured and divided, mm -hmm. uh, ideologically, geographically, uh, and the like, and I and politically. And uh, I was just in Nashville over this weekend for a night with my daughter and her friend. And uh, you go somewhere like that, the flag is everywhere. It's just sure. a symbol of, of everybody. I don't know anybody's politics while I see them holding up the flag, walking right. down the They're streets. It's a symbol everywhere. When did the vice president and the president talk about doing this? Well, they talk every day. And they've talked so they about this issue. they worked this out last week. Well, they t but hold on. They've talked about, they talk every day. And they certainly have talked about this issue. And uh, as you, Brian said, the vice president and the second lady going to the Colts game has been on the books for a very long time. It was and the so last they discuss, thing with Las Vegas had happened. That's right. They just they discuss what they do is they discuss upcoming travel. The vice president and the and the second lady were in Puerto Rico, for example. The so Virgin instead of Islands. canceling yeah. it, he but, knew he was going to have to leave. If the plan was to leave, if the president said leave, if they take a knee, he knew he was going to have to do that because the 49ers are notorious. Well, I'm sure the vice president and the president right. also see that the the polls are on their side. I mean, most Americans say they stand for the flag and. Right. All it represents. I'm just not going to disparage the, the brave men and women in uniform who do things I'm not right. capable of. Right. Right. So I will say, and obviously too, and obviously Peyton Manning's number only gets retired once, and he means so much to the people of Indiana especially. Now let's talk about uh, what's going on with Senator Corker and the President of the United States. A Twitter war yesterday. These two were once very good friends. Now they're going at it personally. In fact, this is what Corker says. It's a shame that the White House has become an adult daycare center. This after a Twitter exchange. Someone obviously missed their shift this morning. What a demeaning tweet at the president. Well, it is, and world leaders see that. We've all worked with Senator Corker over the years. Uh, we thank him for his service, but I find tweets like this to be incredibly irresponsible. It adds to the insulting that uh, the mainstream media and the president's detractors, almost a year after this election, they still can't accept the election results. They're, it adds to their ability and their cover to speak about a president of the United States, the president of the United States, in ways that no president should um, be talked about. And uh, and also, I, I prefer I prefer to express myself privately. Mostly. Especially, he has a relationship with the president. They, he can get him on the cell phone. I think that's First of all, he was in the White House two weeks ago for a private meeting. So that door has been open. Uh, we are relying upon Senator Corker, but so are the people of Tennessee for him to get big things done in the remaining months of, of his mm -hmm. tenure. This is He's announced his retirement. But as head of the as head of a very important committee, uh, I, I think that comments like this are less helpful than saying, 
I, I don't like X, Y, or Z, but I support the president on tax reform. We're going to look at this Iran deal. You know, conservatives have not really forgiven Bob Corker, Senator what did he Corker, do? He for. He actually passed he, a referendum that so, allowed it to, to pass without the majority of votes in the Senate. That's he right. He only got 42 votes for yeah. this. And, and, it's, and it did, that's right. The Iran deal. Uh, by many by many accounts, including this president who ran against the former Secretary of State in part on the Iran deal and is looking very seriously at it right now as, it, as the certification process comes due again. But this president has said from the beginning it was a bad deal. It hurts Americans. Uh, they paid blood money for these hostages. And, and, and the fact is that this president has, has, wants to work, has wanted to work with Senator Corker, Chairman Corker, on looking at this. But conservatives are very upset with Senator Corker for allowing that to go to a vote. Um, and uh, look, I, I just am... I know I'm, I'm very public. I go on TV, et cetera. I speak for, on behalf of the president. But um, I still come from a background where you express yourself privately. And this president has the most open door policy to our senators and our members of Congress um, that I think anybody's ever seen. But what this does, too, is look at what the mainstream media are all covering this morning. This was their this top story. story. Instead of the 70-point immigration plan, what's next on tax well, Bob reform? Bob Corker needs to look at the approval rating of Congress right now. Well, it's, it's, it, it's in the tank. People it's in the tank because, because, because uh, look, they've got, they finally have their chance, right. Ainsley. They have a president who's willing to sign into law. All these things they've been voting on all these years. And, and they ought to do that. I mean, they just ought to pass a couple things all right. already. Kellyanne, thanks for joining us on Thank this you. federal Thank holiday. You. Thank Bye. you.